Oh, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Pastor Gino Jennings, a well-known and often controversial religious leader, has made a significant argument regarding the divine protection of former President Donald Trump. Jennings, who is known for his unfiltered and passionate sermons, suggested that God has a protective hand over Trump. This perspective adds a theological dimension to the discussion of the recent assassination attempt on Trump, which has already stirred political and social debates across the nation. The assassination attempt occurred amidst a fervent campaign rally where Trump, the Republican candidate for the 2024 presidential election, was addressing a large crowd of supporters. As Trump delivered his speech, gunshots rang out, creating chaos and panic among the attendees. Despite the swift response from security personnel, the gunman managed to fire multiple shots, one of which fatally struck an attendee. Two others sustained severe injuries, and Trump himself was hit but not critically injured. The quick actions of the Secret Service and local law enforcement ultimately neutralized the gunman, who was pronounced dead at the scene. That's why I would never tell nobody nothing if God didn't say it. That's right. God didn't say it. I ain't trying to prove nothing to you. No. Men tried to, like, when Trump was running for president mm -hmm. against Biden, do you see the evangelical lunatics? <laughs> How the spirit of error, John said, hereby know no, we the spirit of truth and the, and the spirit, spirit of man. error. The spirit of error fell upon the whole evangelical organization. Jennings' assertion that God will protect Trump is rooted in his interpretation of divine providence and the belief that leaders, whether political or religious, are often under the watchful eye of a higher power. This viewpoint is not uncommon among religious conservatives who view political figures as instruments of God's will, particularly those who align with their values and beliefs. For Jennings and his followers, Trump represents a leader who, despite his flaws and controversies, has been chosen to fulfill a specific role in God's plan. God has never got his prophecy wrong. No. Never. Never. He said not one word That's right. has fall to the ground. So shall my so words be. So shall my words be. That goeth forth out of my mouth. That go forth out of my mouth. It shall not, it return, shall not, not unto me return unto me void. But it shall accomplish. What? It shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. In his sermons, Jennings might draw parallels to biblical figures who were protected by God despite facing significant adversities. For instance, the story of David, who was anointed to be king and protected by God against numerous threats, including attempts on his life by King Saul, could serve as a powerful analogy. Similarly, Jennings might reference the story of Daniel, who was safeguarded by God in the lion's den emphasizing that divine protection is often bestowed upon those chosen for a higher purpose. Jennings' argument also taps into a broader narrative within certain Christian communities that see the political and cultural battles in America as part of a spiritual warfare. Trump, in this narrative, is seen as a champion against forces that these communities perceive as antithetical to their values, such as secularism, liberalism, and moral dissent. Therefore, the belief that God will protect Trump is intertwined with the belief that Trump's political survival and success are essential for the preservation of their religious and cultural ideals. Bible sign. First Thessalonians chapter four and we're at verse sixteen. Oh, this is good. For the Lord Himself. Hold on it. The Lord Himself. Hold it. Let's get the Lord's name. Acts nine five. And He said, "Who art thou?" And you Lord? better give me Psalms chapter one hundred and verse right. three. Amen. I preach that Jesus Christ is God. Yes, I do. Yes, For do. the Bible said, "The Lord Himself the Lord shall himself. descend from heaven with a shout." Let's get the Lord's name in Acts chapter nine and verse five. And He said, "Who art thou, Lord?" Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, "And the Lord said, I am Jesus." Let's get the Lord who He admit that He is in Psalms one hundred and verse 100. three. Know ye the Lord? Know ye the Lord? That he is God. That he is God. Give me Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5. Let's One see Lord. how many lords it is. One Lord. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. However, this perspective is not without its critics. Many argue that invoking divine protection for political figures can be problematic 
as it can be seen as conflating religious faith with political allegiance. Critics might contend that this approach can lead to the dangerous elevation of political leaders to quasi-messianic status, where their actions and decisions are beyond reproach because they are perceived as divinely sanctioned. This can undermine the democratic principles of accountability and critical scrutiny. Furthermore, the notion of divine protection raises theological questions about the nature of suffering and divine will. If God protects certain individuals, what does that imply about those who suffer or fall victim to violence such as the attendees injured or killed in the assassination attempt? These are complex theological questions that challenge the simplistic narrative of divine favoritism and call for a deeper understanding of the interplay between divine providence, human free will, and the presence of evil in the world. The incident not only underscores the perilous state of political discourse in the United States, but also highlights the immediate need to address the rising tide of political violence. President Biden's call for unity and a reduction in political temperature comes at a time when the nation is grappling with profound divisions that threaten the very fabric of democracy. His message, while poignant, also brings to light the inherent contradictions and challenges in navigating a political environment rife with hostility and mutual distrust. In his address, Biden poignantly stated, while we may disagree, we are not enemies, we're neighbors, we're friends, co-workers, citizens, and most importantly, we are fellow Americans. This sentiment captures the essence of his plea for unity and serves as a reminder of the foundational principles upon which the United States was built. Principles of mutual respect, civil discourse, and the recognition of shared humanity. However, the path to achieving this vision of unity is fraught with obstacles. The recent years have seen a significant escalation in political rhetoric, with inflammatory language and divisive narratives becoming increasingly commonplace. This environment has not only polarized the electorate, but has also created a breeding ground for acts of political violence, as evidenced by the tragic events in Butler. Biden's call to lower the temperature in our politics is not merely a rhetorical device, but a vital necessity for the preservation of democratic norms. The political climate characterized by fierce partisanship and a zero-sum approach to governance has led to an erosion of trust in public institutions and a decline in civil engagement. The normalization of extreme views and the marginalization of moderate voices have further exacerbated the situation, making it imperative for leaders on both sides of the aisle to actively work towards de-escalation and constructive dialogue. Biden's address serves as a crucial reminder that the health of a democracy is contingent upon the ability of its citizens to engage in respectful and informed discourse, even amidst profound disagreements. The assassination attempt on Trump also brings to the fore the role of media and social platforms in shaping political narratives and influencing public sentiment. The rapid dissemination of information, coupled with the proliferation of misinformation, has significantly impacted the public's perception of political figures and events. In this context, Biden's call for unity is also a call for unity, is also a call for responsible journalism and ethical communication practices. The media's role in tempering political rhetoric and providing balanced coverage is critical in fostering an informed and engaged citizenry. Furthermore, Social media platforms, with their vast reach and influence, have a responsibility to mitigate the spread of incendiary content and promote constructive engagement. The assassination attempt and Biden's subsequent address have elicited reactions from political leaders across the spectrum. Many express solidarity with Trump and the victims, calling for heightened security measures at political events and a renewed focus on addressing political events and a renewed focus on addressing political extremism. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell issued a statement condemning the attack and calling for unity. This heinous act of violence is an attack on our democracy. We must come together as Americans to denounce such actions and ensure that our political process remains free from fear and sure that our political process remains free from fear and intimidation. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi also voiced her condemnation and called for prayers for the victims. This act of violence is deeply troubling, and my heart goes out to all those affected.
We must remain vigilant in protecting our democratic institutions and ensuring that such tragedies do not define our political landscape. Pastor Gino Jennings' assertion that God will protect Trump is a reflection of a particular theological and political worldview that sees divine intervention in contemporary political events. It underscores the deep intertwining of faith and politics within certain segments of American Christianity and highlights the ongoing debate about the role of religious belief in public life. As the nation grapples with the aftermath of the assassination attempt, Jennings' perspective adds a layer of spiritual interpretation to the political discourse, inviting both support and controversy.